All right, so for the second part of class, we're going to take a look at stairs and ramps. Now, has anyone sort of on their project created a two-story two -story building and already messed around with this at all? On your own? Kind of a small building. Yeah, you did some stairs. What do you think of the stairs? Are they easy to, easy to use? Easy yeah. to work with? Hey, you know, you're on a small project, 500 square feet, so there's not a lot of opportunity to, to have uh, two stories. But uh, moving forward, this is probably going to be a, a pretty good tool to be familiar with. Um, but we're going to talk about sort of the basic, uh, the basic automated process for the tissue for creating a stair. And generally, based on a bunch of rules that we put in place about how wide your treads are, or how high your risers are, or whether or not you have these sides to your stair, or what kind of railing you're using. It's just a, a series of constraints that you put on, and then um, start drawing your stair, and Revit does a lot of the work for you. So let's take a look at that. And actually, maybe just really br briefly before moving into stairs, actually, you know what, we'll come back to that. Let's start a new project. And on level one, let's make a floor. So in your home tab, floor, be something really simple. Be something like that. Finish your floor. Let's go up to level two. And let's do something similar. On our home tab, we pick floor. Maybe make a second floor that covers about roughly half of the first. You can finish that floor. So that's what we've got right now. Pretty simple. So let's go back to level one floor plan. And if you look over here, under the circulation, we've got some options to model railings, ramps, and stairs. Let's start with the stairs. So click the stair button. And before we draw anything, let's take a quick look at what the properties are of these stairs. So for starters, with constraints, you know, by drawing this on level one, Revit is assuming that you need for this stair to start at level one and end at level two. It gives you offsets for either if you want them to start just above or just below, uh, either above or below. Do that. Letting, we're not going to get into the multi story level today, but you've also got some areas here where it's talking about the graphics. How are these going to show up when you put them on the sheet when you print them out? And what this is saying for the up and down text is if you're on the, the first floor and you're looking at this in a, in a drawing sheet, you're going to have a piece of text that tells you that that way is up. Likewise, if you're on the second floor, there's going to be an arrow pointing down, letting you know that that's, that's how you would put down on the first floor. But then also, you know, for the dimensions, we've got the width, uh, three feet here. Um, and then we've got the desired number of risers, 18. Now, this number has been this has kind of already been figured out for you a little bit based on uh, a series of rules that are set up within the stair. So before we get modeling, just one more time, let's click on the edit type. And so now we're looking at this, this, um, this type of stair in the Revit model called a 7 inch max riser, 11 inch tread. So that means, so at, at maximum, you're going to be going up 7 inches, and over you're going to be going 11 inches. This is your T, this is your R. Riser, 
and trap. <coughs> So again, you've got some you've got some ability here to choose what materials you're going to use for your thread, your riser, and your stringer. Your stringer is the the piece of uh, the piece of material that goes uh, on the side of the stair. And we'll see that you can you can make some adjustments so that that's actually not part of the stair if that's what you want. And you've got some other parameters here that you can look at for your. So for your treads, your, your minimum depth, uh, how thick they are, the nosing is the piece that sort of comes out over the stair. So the nosing would be, you've got a, here's a stair set, your nosing right there. You can specify how big or small that is or whether, whether you have one at all. Um, likewise with your, <coughs> with your stringers, you've got some parameters. Um, this closed. Uh, if your stringer's closed, and these are your stair treads, you've really got a piece of material, depending on what you specify, that runs next to those. You see that pretty commonly in like fire stairs quite often, but maybe you want something a little bit looser and you don't want those at all. You could choose, instead of closed, none. Um, so yeah, that's good for now. Let's take a brief look at the calculation rules. And actually, this is something that I'm not as familiar with, but you know, Glenn actually um, mentioned that this equation 2r plus t is around 25 is a general rule of thumb that you'd use for uh, setting up uh, rules that calculate your appropriate stair, uh, stair risers and treads. So this this desired number of risers, this 18 here, this has been sort of calculated for you. Now, you could, if you wanted to, change that. But if you choose a number that, that's not, that's lower, for example, then that's, it's going to basically come back and say, listen, you don't have enough room, actually, to, uh, to get as high as you want to go uh, based on the rules that you set up for, for these stairs to work. So if I say, like, 15 there, it's not going to like that. It's going to say the desired number of risers is too small. It's saying that in 15 threads at 7 inches max, you can't get to the 10 feet that you need to get to to get to your second floor. So, let's go ahead and say okay to all of this. And so again, once you're in your create stairs, we're in sketch mode here. Let's over here. We've got our run, we've got our boundary, we've got our riser. <laughs> when you see stairs, these outside lines are your boundaries. Our risers are where we're actually moving up. And then the run, as you're going to see when we model, is actually just a center line, basically saying where you want these stairs to travel. So let's start with our run. Click somewhere in the in the model space. I'm going to zoom in and look on your screen. It basically says that as I start moving, it's it's giving me like sort of a recommendation. If I if I just move this all in one line, how much space do I need based on the rules that I have set up to move up to the second floor? You can see here it's saying nine risers created and nine remaining. So my push is about halfway in between uh, between that line. So. For starters, let's just let's just move our cursor above this, and saying we want to we want to create all those stairs in one line. Finish, and again, you can see the the boundaries are green, the treads are black, and the uh, the run is is blue. Let's go ahead and finish that. Take a look at what we've got. <coughs> 
So you can see now in 3D, we've got stairs going from level 1 to level 2. And as part of that stair type, it attached, it went ahead and attached a railing for us. Uh, we'll move forward a little bit and see that we can, we can actually modify or change what we want for that. But for now, let's connect these stairs with level 2. If you go to level 2, you know, you could just grab this stair and start moving it. But again, another sort of powerful tool when you're precisely lining something up is the modify and under edit, the align tool. It's also AL on your keyboard if you're into shortcuts. But we're going to pick this second floor and we're going to pick the edge of the stair and it's going to line those up for us. Yeah. Hover over that tool. If you hover over a line, it'll give you a little preview of what you're doing. And you see this little diagram, it's first selecting this, and then it's selecting this, and the second one lines up with the first. So don't drive yourself crazy and just start picking things willy nilly. Make sure you're doing it in the right order so that your things are aligning the way you want them to. <coughs> so let's take a look at some other things that you can do with stairs. Again, go to your Home tab, and under the Circulation, choose your stairs. And let's go back to our Level 1 view. So this time, rather than maybe a stair set that you might see in a house, it goes straight up you know, in, one, in one string. Um, maybe something like NYC2 or any other commercial village, maybe some commercial village, where you go up, there's a landing, and then you turn around and go the other direction. It's pretty easy to do in Revit. So again, I'm going to choose the run. And I'm going to start my stair. And again, it's, it's basically sort of showing me, if I were just to do it all in one line, what that footprint would look like. But this time, instead of going all the way over that, I'm going to go about halfway there. You can see it says, again, nine risers created, nine remaining. So I'm about halfway. I'm going to click. And it's going to make that first part of my stair. And then over here to the right, I can sort of align with where I stopped. And now it's important to remember that what we're sketching is our run. So I don't want to come in too close. I want to make sure that there's space for the whole stair. So I'm going to come out a little bit. And I'm going to click. And I'm going to finish the other nine risers. <coughs> Revit does you the courtesy of creating this landing for you. I'm going to finish that. Go check it out in 3D. Everybody with me so far? It's all making sense? Do that one again? Sure. All right, let's do that one more time. So again, the home, let's go to let's go to our level one plan again. And let's choose stairs. Make sure that you're specifying your run, where you want the stairs to go. And so we're gonna click. And it's kind of tough to see, especially down here, but you can kind of see it. This is telling you based on how far you've moved through this profile, how many stairs you've actually created. But how many more you need to make to get up on the next feet? So I want to try to go about halfway. If it takes 18 to get to the second floor, I'm going to try to make it say nine. Nine runners created, nine remaining. And I'm going to click once. That's the first half of my stair. And then I want to come out a little, a little ways over here and finish the other half. All 
How's that? Was that better? Make sense? Great. All right, so maybe, again, with the design that you're creating, you want to be a little bit more unique than just this sort of orthogonal stair. Maybe you can use what you've got through this automated tool and just modify it based on what you need. So, you know, for example, instead of, instead of this, um, actually, let's go over here. Instead of this just being an area for circulation, this, uh, this, um, this landing that was created, you could, you could stretch this out a little bit. You know, instead of just being like that, you could maybe delete that. And remember, the green lines are our boundary. We want to draw a boundary, a different boundary. And let's do it just like the sketch show. The sketch show something circular. Let's, let's see if we can do that. So pick your arc. And so maybe this, maybe this there has a space where you can have a piece of furniture where people can hang out and read a book or have a coffee or something. Or again, using the geometry that you've already created, let's, I'm just going to copy this stair over here. And I'm going to select the stair and click Edit Sketch. <clears throat> Maybe by pulling these out a little bit, you can change the shape that the stairs actually follow. And again, rather than just turning around in a U like that, you could maybe go about halfway, have a landing, and then maybe you finish up over here. And Revit will help you figure out that geometry. Everybody with me? Make sense? Take that as a yes. So let's look briefly at if you wanted to make a spiral stair. Again, I want to specify my run. And instead of using a line tool here, let's use this arc that's right next to it. I'm going to pick a point. And so for a, for a spiral stair, you need a really sort of tight boundary. You can't, you can't get too crazy about how far you go out here. You know, if you go out too far, you might just have sort of you know, like a, a circular stair like that. But when you're specifying that radius, you said something like maybe two and a half feet. You could carry it around and do a spiral stair.
So it's a pretty powerful tool to help you with your 3D modeling of stairs, but you know, it's also, as you can see, with this generic stair that we used, it's not the most sort of stylish. So let's take a look at maybe with these, um, with these railings, we could do something a little bit different. So go ahead and click on one of the railings. And under Element Properties, let's go ahead and edit the type. And instead of modifying this, this exact type, let's duplicate it and make another one. Actually, you know what? Cancel out of this really quickly. Sorry about that. Choose your railing. And under the element dialog, we've got a place where we can pick a different kind. And let's take a look at these, um, the handrail with the pipe. So you can see rather than the uh, sort of protection on the side being vertical here, it's aligned with the, with the direction of the handrail. But it looks, it looks a little bit bulky around here. Let's Let's think about something we might be able to do to, to, to maybe make these a little bit thinner. Like you've probably seen in some sort of modern buildings, like stairs that have a little table as the as the side protection. Uh, let's let's look at what we need to do if we wanted to change that for this for this kind of handrail. And to do that, go ahead and pick the handrail. Say element properties. We're going to edit that type and duplicate it. We don't want to change this one. We want to leave this one in the model the way it is, but we want to use most of what's there and then just sort of modify it based on what we're looking for, for that sort of thinner wire cable that we're going to use for the side protection. So instead of pipe, let's call this cable. And so look at the options that we have here. And we've got a railing height. And we can we can look at our, our rail structure and our balusters. The balusters are the sort of structural pieces holding up the handrail to go vertical. So let's let's take a look at the rail. And if you look at that structure, this will give us six uh, six components of that handrail, and we can see that. Actually, we could see that. But it's more hiding, but maybe you can in the view that you're looking at. But so you've got these one, two, three, four, five, six pieces that are making up uh, the structure of that rail, and you can see that. Um, let's see. You can see that the top piece, the top handrail, this is in the order that it would go from from the ground, moving up. Six inches to foot, foot and a half from the ground. But this one's a little bit bigger, an uh, inch and a half. And then all the other ones are about an inch. But if we're thinking about like a cable, let's see what we could do to make that smaller. So for the profile, it gives you some options. If you click on it, you can pull down this little menu. And you can see that we don't really have anything that's that small. We've got something that's two inches, it's rectangular, something that's an inch and a half, but nothing like small, like a quarter of an inch or half of an inch. Um, so again, you know, we're, we're trying to be expressive and more creative in what we're doing with the stair, but, you know, Revit's holding us back. So let's, let's take a look at what you have to do in order to free yourself up to do something like that. So what we're lacking here is a profile, and profiles are family within the Revit environment. So let's, let's just say OK for now. We've modified what we wanted to. Let's say OK for now. And let's expand out this thing on the side that says families and go down to profiles. So you can see this top one, it says circular handrail. And we've got our one inch and our one inch and a half, just like we saw when we were looking to modify our, our railing. <coughs> and let's, let's take the one inch and duplicate it. And let's call it quarter inch. And then double click on that. 
See here where it says the diameter of that profile is just an inch? We're just going to modify that down to say a quarter of an inch. All right, so now we've got the profile. We need to go back in that railing and modify it. So again, pick on the railing. Now it's still the handrail table, the new type that we created, but we haven't edited very much yet. Do element properties, edit type, and then again, look at your rail structure, and profile, now that we've created that smaller one, it's one of our options, circular handrail a quarter inch. You guys with me? Yeah? Sorry? Thanks, Dean. So I'm just going to move, move through each of these individually, the bottom ones, and move them down to a quarter inch. And for the top, for the top one, rather than just this by category, let's maybe make it something wood or something. You could do the same thing for the other cables that you made. You could go in and find some sort of metal material that you like that you think if you rendered it, it would, it would give a better, better sort of look to it. But for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Um, click OK, OK, OK. And there we go. And if I turn on my shading, you can see that the, the top piece is changed to some sort of wood. And then we've got our cables for the rest. And so just so all three groups are about at the same place uh, in the class sequence, we're going to stop here for right now.